The origins of the Brooklyn Heights Promenade can be traced back to the early 1940s, when Robert Moses, then the commissioner of the New York City Department of Parks, proposed a highway connecting Brooklyn and Queens. The original route of the BQE would have split Brooklyn Heights in two, carving a 160-foot-wide gash through its very heart, as it did in Cobble Hill. The Brooklyn Heights Association knew such a route would be fatal to their neighborhood, and they aggressively opposed the plan. Comprised of politically connected lawyers and savvy professionals, this powerful community organization managed to get the highway redirected to Furman Street along the western edge of the Heights. At the time, Furman Street was bordered on both sides by warehouses. In order to fit the BQE, Fred Toomler, the engineer of the city planning department, designed an unusual triple cantilever structure that would split traffic between two decks. Note how the promenade was not part of his original plan. The concept evolved during public hearings with city officials and residents, and there is great debate about those claiming credit for the idea. Regardless, by 1943, the engineering firm of Andrews and Clark devised more specific plans for the cantilevered highway, this time incorporating a promenade deck. Warehouses on the east side of Furman Street were demolished in late 1946, and Del Balzo Construction Company began building the structure. The landscaping of the promenade was designed by Clark and Rapuano, one of the first multidiscipline landscape architecture firms in the country responsible for Bryant Park, Riverside Park, City Hall Park, and the Queen's World Fair, as well as many other projects of the Robert Moses era. They paved the walkway with stone slate trimming and Hastings Block, a hexagonal asphalt paving widely used by the New York Park Department before World War II. They planted honey locust trees, shrubs, and flowers in green strips 20 feet wide and at 25-foot intervals. There is an abundance of benches and lamps, providing both comfort and safety. The unique circular entrances at Remsen and Orange Street swirl downwards via ramps, and the entire promenade stretches for a third of a mile. After nearly 10 years of construction, the portion of the promenade south of Clark Street was officially opened on October 8, 1950. It was so popular with the public that, when the remaining section was completed, an even more extravagant ceremony occurred on December 7, 1951. At this time, the warehouses on the west side of Furman Street still existed, partially blocking the docks and piers of what is today Brooklyn Bridge Park. In April of 1953, the Port Authority asserted the right to replace these warehouses with 70-foot structures, which would have completely blocked off the scenic views. Once again, the Brooklyn Heights Association led the opposition, starting a letter-writing campaign that ultimately forced the city to adopt a special Class S zone along Furman Street, restricting any waterfront development to a height of 50 feet. In 1954, the BQE finally opened to cars, with northbound traffic in the upper deck and southbound on the lower. And in the late 1960s, the warehouses were finally torn down on the west side of Furman Street, opening the panoramic vista of the harbor, skyline, and bridge that we see today. In 1974, the City Planning Commission spot-zoned the promenade with the city's first special scenic district, establishing a view plane from the edge of the promenade to roughly the middle of the East River, above which no structures could rise. This zoning protects the view to this day. So here we are in 2019. After 70 years of development, one of the most spectacular promenades in the entire world may be replaced with a six-lane highway. The good news is that Brooklyn Heights residents aren't going to let it happen. If you walk around the neighborhood, you see a galvanized community demanding alternatives, just as they did when Robert Moses first planned to drive the BQE straight through town. There are some things worth fighting for, and this is one of them. To learn more about the current threat to the Brooklyn Heights Promenade, please click this link below, and thanks for watching.